Hey, welcome to our lesson video for evaluating powers of i. Our learning target is to simplify those powers of like i to the 17th or i to the 21st. You know, what does that really mean? So that's what we're going to look at, how to simplify terms like that. To be able to do this though, I need you to memorize four things for me, okay? And three of the four are pretty simple. i to the zero, we've learned anything to the zero power, as long as it's not zero itself, is a one. Anything to the first power isn't going to change, it's going to stay itself. So i to the first would stay i. i squared, we know is a negative one. i cubed, that's the only one we might have to think about a little bit. So we i cubed means we have i times i times i. i times i though, that's i squared, and what do I know that is? That is negative one. Okay, so negative one times an i, oh, that's just gonna be negative i. Okay, so notice we've got one i, negative one, negative i. We've got this cycle going on, okay? Uh, if we looked at powers of z i, so zero, one, power two, power three, what if I had i to the fourth? We would start back over in the cycle and go back to one. So power of five would be i, power six, negative i, or excuse me, negative one, power of seven, negative i. Okay, so we just keep going through the cycle. But what if I gave you i to the 123rd power? Are you really going to sit there and count through the cycle to see where you end up? No, oh, that would be ridiculous. Okay, so we've got this little trick. So I'm going to look at i to the 17th. Since there are four things in the cycle, what we can do is actually divide 17, the power, by 4. Always a 4, because there are four things in the cycle. And the remainder will tell me where we'd end up. So four goes in four times, but that doesn't really matter. It's the remainder that I care about. So 17 minus 16, I would have a remainder of one, okay? So this would match up to i to the first because of the remainder, and that would just be i. So i to the 17th is really just plain old i. Hmm. I to the 22nd power. Let's try some other ones. Well, I'm going to divide by 4. So 4 will go in, uh, let's see, 5 times. 5 times 4 is 20. And my remainder would be a 2. So I to the 22nd, I don't care about the 5. I care about the remainder. That tells me where I end in the cycle. I would end at I squared, because that's what the remainder was. And if you recall the things you need to memorize, i squared is really negative one. So uh, that would be my simplified answer. i to the 22nd is really just a negative one. Let's try another one. Let's take 43. We're going to do the exact same thing, divide it by a four. How many times does it go in? Oh, let's see, 10 times, I think. You could do the old school long division, or if you can just know in your head, four goes in 10 times, and that would be at 40, and I have a remainder of three. So since my remainder is three, I can say that i to the 43rd is equivalent to i cubed, which is really just negative i based on those four things we need to memorize. Okay, so pretty cool. But well, what if i has a negative power? You know, do I just divide four by, or divide this negative 13 by a four? Ugh, it doesn't quite work that way. Remember, property of exponents. Negative exponents mean to flip. So let me write that over here. Flip, okay? So what's happening is this i needs to shoot to the bottom. So I really have i to the positive 13 on the bottom, but since there's nothing else on top, we fill it with a 1. Okay. Uh, but let's get rid of that 13. Let's divide it by a 4. How many times does it go in? Well, let's see. 4 goes in 13, uh, I believe, 3 times, and I get a 12. And when I have a subtract, I have a remainder of 1. Whoop, whoop. So that means... I to the 13th is really just an I to the 1st, which the things we memorized, that's really just an I. But after we just did all that work, dag nabbit, we're still not done. Here's the deal. You are not allowed to have an I at the bottom of a fraction. We've talked about this when we talked about dividing. So, holy cats, how do I get rid of it? 
Well, we multiply by the conjugate. But this is kind of funny. What would the conjugate of i be? Well, it'd just be negative i. Remember how we did the opposite with the conjugate thing? How we changed plus signs to minus signs or vice versa? So I'm gonna just going to multiply by a negative i because that's the opposite. And so here's what happened. I would have 1 times a negative i. Uh, it's just going to stay negative i on top. But what's on the bottom here? I've got two i's and a negative sign. Well, 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 there's a one understood to be there. So this i squared, holy cats, is going to make this negative one turn positive. So I've just got a one down at the bottom, which I really don't need. So i to the negative 13th is really just <gasps> da, 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 negative i. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, let's try one more. So again, I've got the negative. So first things first, blah, 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 flip it. Flip it good, okay? So there's understood to be a fraction there, even though we didn't see one originally. So what this means, because it's negative, and I gotta flip it, that I goes to the bottom. Oh yeah, I to the 67th. And I filled the top with a one, okay? Now I divide 67 by a four, and let's see, how many times does that go in? Oh my goodness, 20 is too big, uh, 15 is 60, so 16, goes in 16 times, and I get 64, and I get a remainder of 3, so what's that mean? Well, that means that, really, I to the 67th on the bottom is equivalent to I cubed, because that was what the remainder was. So then, from the things we memorized, we know that i cubed is really just a negative i, but man, oh man, I still got the same problem like the last one. I can't have an i down there. So I, I want to multiply by the conjugate. So the conjugate of a negative i, just the opposite, would be a positive i. Whoop, whoop. All right, so one times an i, it's just gonna stay an i. Same thing's gonna happen down here. We've got the negative sign with the two i's, so that would be i squared. But you know, there's understood to be a one there. Oh, so that i squared makes that one turn positive, and the i is gone, so I just have a one down there, which I don't need, so, ba ba da ba, it's just i. So that finishes up our evaluating powers of i. The in-class worksheet we did, if you missed it, or if you weren't with us, uh, we did these seven problems on the back of the paper, okay, because there were three through six, on the front to finish, and then these seven, eight, and nine on the back. So I will see you next time. Keep learning and have fun, Glen Oak.